so at the moment my project my project is on my device of course and it looks pretty good I added some colors and some fonts I'm gonna take a quick look at it in the web browser just so that I don't waste time loading it up on my on my devices but you know there's the project I chose my colors here you, you probably have your own colors so it's working pretty well I want to deal with a few things uh, a little bit more of editing the design of the project um, like I don't like there's so much space on the top over here and maybe I want to you know change some other things maybe that footer down there is also a little too large so that's going to be regard uh, related to CSS so we're going to bring back CSS to edit our, our our project and we've got a couple of ways to do it and this is uh, this is going to vary depending on your devices so we'll see how it goes I think for some of us this will work really well and for some of us it'll be a little complicated so in short the project is an HTML project so we are able to uh, we're able to use the development tools of, of the web browser and such, but I want to bring something very cool to your attention. Hopefully, you've got your device, a real device. This will work best right first when I show you on a, on a real device, but it works on virtual as well. So hopefully, hopefully you've got your real device plugged in, ready to go. Now, remind me again, what operating system are we working with? Android. Remind me again, who makes Android? What's that one web browser Google has? Chrome. Google Chrome. We have this very cool built-in feature to Google Chrome that will allow us to uh, use the development tools on the device that is live. So I'm going to show you that. Go ahead and load Google Chrome. Load up Google Chrome and you know it opens up the usual web browser here that you've always seen. And I remember back in the good old days uh, the little tools uh, menu up here, what do they call it now? The Customize and Control Google Chrome, the options. It used to be a little, uh, a little wrench, I believe, and now it's got the, the, the plain old hamburger menu that's all the rage. Uh, so anyway, click on that little uh, options menu. Get all those options there. Scroll down to More Tools, and then you have Inspect Devices. Now on later, on some of the latest versions of Google Chrome, you have this. On earlier versions, you don't. How early? Well, I have to look it up, but probably version, I don't know, 35 and up. And we've probably got version 40 at this point. So in Google Chrome, you go up to the, to the menu, whatever its official name is. We go to More Tools, and then we'll go to Inspect Devices. What you get is this new tab that um, you might also want to take a look at your device. Um, a moment ago, my Chrome said device asleep. Then I looked on my device and it said allow debugging. So take a look at your device if you don't see anything. Uh, on my device it's, it asked allow debugging and then I click yes and remember. So I turn that on on my device and then now I'm seeing the basic name of my device. It's the XT1528. Well, if you, if you have your real device and you've got your app load your app hopefully then Chrome responds and it's telling me something web view in com .campus basic there's my app I forgot to change the uh, the ID name but it shows up there this should also work if you've got a virtual device so if you're taking the the, the, the time to set up your virtual device launch your app Chrome should see it too it's a virtual device but it'll be here now some of you might have an older version, an older Android phone, and it doesn't show up. Unfortunately, this is not going to work for everyone. It really depends on your device. So the best way to check it, if it works, is plug it in and see if it works. And so this is saying, there's a web view. There's an app running. You can click Inspect. And for me, at least, yours may vary, hopefully not too much. For me, now it's showing me a live view of my device. It is live. I go here, and that changes, and that changes. And even more amazing, I can use my mouse and interact with the device. 
So I've got my device right here, and I'm going screen to screen. So this is sort of like screen casting. And um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, interacting with a device from my computer. That one didn't pop up. I, do, I did get the pop-up on my device, but not in the browser, I noticed. That's interesting. So it's not flawless, but... Um, and then right there it's asking you to type your name, and then the screen got half big. Anyway, I'll add my name. It takes me back. Okay, so the point of this is many-fold. One is that I'm able to test uh, my device from Google Chrome um, to quickly use it on the computer with the mouse and so forth. Maybe I need to take a screenshot quickly to do some troubleshooting, to upload it to Stack Exchange, to do something with it. We have that other screenshot capture tool, but it's not live, if you recall. This is live. And then so I'm able to, I can see my finger right there. I can tap and hold and drag up. And so I'm seeing on my screen what's on my device. The other important thing about this is that we'll be able to use the development tools. Question. Um, how do you get that screen, the image of the, uh, the device? Because I'm not getting that. I'm just getting the uh, device. Okay, if you're not getting the screen, of your of your device, it may not be fully compatible. You may only see, you know, the CSS and HTML and such, but not a preview. Um, we can try looking up on this little gear on the top right, devices. And that's emulated devices. Um, yeah, I'd have to do a little bit more research. I ran into this on one of my older devices that it didn't give me a preview. And from the research that I did, being able to see this correlates with what version, I believe it was, what version of Chrome is on your device, as also with the version on your computer. So I believe it was that if you've got a newer version of Chrome on your device, then your computer should see it. Um, so if you're not seeing it right away, unfortunately, we might not get that feature. So this is what I said earlier about this might work great for some people and might not for others. Did anyone else get exactly what I'm seeing, which is my device here and the code? Yes, a few people, good. If you're close enough to that, um, we have other ways to do what, what I want to talk about, which is to further customize the HTML and CSS. But if you're able to see your device, great. You, you've got possibly a newer device with a newer version of uh, Android and a newer version of Chrome and all the stars have aligned and you're good. If not, one of your stars is out of alignment, we'll have to figure it out. But um, this is just like the um, element inspector that we used last month when we were working on our purely web project. Well here, it's a web project, it's just running inside of a web view, it's running inside of Cordova. So we are able to do what we had um, before. On my particular screen, when I first loaded it up, I saw that my HTML code was really small here. So if you pull that edge over, you can see more of your code. Oh, and that reminds me also, um, maybe, if you're, maybe if you're not seeing your device, I just thought of something here, if you're not seeing your device, um, see if you've got that little screencast icon. Mine is turned on and it's showing my screencast. If it's not showing your device, see if, if you have that icon or not and see about turning it on and see what happens. But mine's working so I'm not going to touch it because I know that for me what's happened before is it's been working and I change something and then it doesn't work and then I've got to um, detach the device and all this stuff. So sometimes this is finicky, unfortunately. But the cool thing is if you get it fully working, when you roll over the content of, of your HTML, so I see section data role page ID home, I can open that, and then I see the header, I see the article, I can open that, and I'll be able to see elements inside of the project. Kind of like when we were troubleshooting 
using the element inspector last month. And I can do the opposite. I can turn on that little magnifying glass at the top here, roll over elements over here. So I've got a magnifying glass up there. Turn that on, hover over your screencast, click on something, and then it'll highlight here in your HTML and your CSS so that we can figure out how to fully customize it. So this is how we're going to customize some of these details of our app. It's plain old CSS again, but in a different light. And if we're able to use Chrome development tools, that'll be the best way to, to do this on your app live. Um, you, The cool thing is you should be able to, for example, I see something that says font size 1.5 on my HTML here. I believe we can change this to... Um, maybe not. But I'm trying to see about changing my code and then it, up, it updates live on my device also. Let's see. It's going to depend on the element because that's the user agent style sheet that's built in so I can't edit that apparently. But if I have some other element, yeah, okay. So I'll tell you what I'm doing in a moment. But um, so here I did uh, give me a font size of two M's and how it's large on screen and on my device, and then I increase that it's three M's. It's also three M's on my device. So I am able to edit that live um, on my device, if your stars are aligned, apparently. So let me just refresh this. When you refresh at the top, it goes back to the default. So this is still, it's, this is just like a playground. It's a scratch pad. What we're editing here does not apply permanently to your app, like we saw last month, but it's a good uh, playground to figure out what do I need to edit in order for this to become permanent. For example, this text of learn of a uh, you know of welcome and, and take an art class and such it looks nice, but there's a few things I want to fix. There's too much space above the text. Maybe the text is a little too large than it needs to be. So we'll be able to edit. the different elements. One of the ways to first do that is to identify the particular element. Uh, so turning on the magnifying glass, selecting the element, it's going to give you a preview also about what what elements that'll be. That says H2. This one over here is a pretty big one. That one is another big one. But anyway, let's say this this element. I'm hovering over here. I'm seeing some colors. This is uh, most likely the margin, so it's got some amount of margin that's pushing that down, some amount that's pushing it up, but then there's still an empty space, which most likely means there's also some margin for, oh, there's margin right there, for the article content. So the article content itself has some space. So if I'm trying to edit this and it's still not lining up exactly how I want, most likely it's several elements together. CSS is like a jigsaw puzzle one thing interlocks with another. And if you're only trying to edit one thing, you're forgetting about the other one or two or ten things that interlock. So I'm going to click on this element and I'm confirming that it shows down here at the bottom. It's an H2 element, so in theory I could uh, edit uh, my H2 to control that but I might use H2 other in other parts of my project, and therefore that might be too generic. And so everywhere that I use H2 will be, uh, will be affected. Another way to be more specific is, well, this is H2 inside of article.ui content. So it's an H2 element. It's an H2 tag inside of a UI content class, specifically attached to article. So I can be that specific, and that way only the heading twos in the UI content class attached to the article element 
will be affected. So to test my hypothesis, um, at the very top right then, these are the styles that are currently set up and being used. That, that looks familiar, because we wrote that in our font style sheet, CSS file. At the top right then you have a little plus symbol to add a brand new rule, a brand new CSS selector. Again, this is not going to be permanent. This is just for me to figure out what to change. And it seemed to then suggest, okay, we can edit the H2. And that will probably work, but as I said, um, according to what I'm seeing down here, I should be a little bit more specific just to be safe. And as I said last month, which I'll re repeat this time again, you want to read this from the right to the left. Right is very specific, left is very general. So the heading 2 is the very specific element inside of a class inside of an HTML tag, inside of an, uh, an ID, and then inside of body, and inside of HTML. So I'm going to try, instead of the suggestion of simply H2, I'm going to try what it's suggesting to me, which is article.ui-content. What I'm doing there is typing the much more specific selector. Now only heading twos inside of the content inside of the article will be affected because I could have heading twos inside of that sidebar. And remember the sidebar might not use that structure. I believe we used a side for the element instead of article. And I'm seeing from other code that's already there, for example, font size, I can start typing font, and then because this is a this is a very useful tool, it's going to suggest you mean font size, font family, font kerning, font stretch. These are the appropriate CSS selectors that we can use at this point. So yes, I do mean font size. I can tab that or press or click it. And I press tab and then it says, okay, well, do you mean one of these keywords or do you mean your own? Just for fun, I'm going to type 3 em. And then now it's really big. So I seem to be on the right track. I'm editing the thing that, I, that I'm trying to edit. Way too large, of course. So I'll just, for the moment, put 1m, maybe 1.1. 1 That apply to my other screen, so I'm just taking a quick browse. So again, this is not permanent. If I were to refresh, I lose it, it goes back to how it was. I want to make it permanent. Therefore, I want to put it on my style sheet in my project. Um, so in my project, I've got the kodika.external.css. I want to edit kodika.external.css. The CSS technically matters what order you put your, your code in because you could have heading 2 and then a definition for it. 40 lines later you have heading 2 again with a different definition and the second one is the one that takes over. The last one takes over from the cascade top to bottom. 
So you have to figure out when is it appropriate or where is it appropriate to add your CSS code, your JavaScript code, your HTML code, because it's usually processed from top to bottom and left to right. In this case, it might not really matter if I add my code to the very end, but I'm going to add it near the beginning because I want to set this as one of my selectors, one of my CSS rules, as soon as possible. So it takes place, it takes hold onto the project. And if I then want to further refine it, then I add it lower in the code. But the code that I wrote a moment ago in the temporary element inspector, I copied it. I forgot to say that. You can, uh, whatever you wrote there, whatever you uh, wrote there, and I lost it, but whatever you wrote, uh, you can click and drag to select and then uh, control C to copy uh, or right click copy. So uh, that was just my scratch pad. I needed to copy that, switch over to notepad, and then I can make it permanent. So the element inspector guided me that I need to um, write this selector and with a little trial and error I like the 1.2 M's because I was seeing it live in the web browser and even better live on the device. There's no guesswork. <clears throat> Since I made a change to the code of my project then it would be best to load up Node and and run it again or emulate it. That obviously takes forever so this is a big time saver if it's working like mine. I can, I can move on. Um, I worked with one element that, that, was, um, that I edited a bit. I can take the time to compile it, um, but we know how long that takes. So if it's quick for you, go ahead and do it, but for me it's really slow, so I'm not going to compile it yet. And in, in any event, I wasn't quite finished, so I'm going to waste a lot of time making a couple of changes, building it, make a few more changes, build it. That, that's just going to slow me down, especially on my computer. So um, uh, I'm going to continue to refine how this, how this works, um, or, or how it looks. So again, I'm still kind of wrestling with, well, I've got too much space on top of my, my, my headings up there. Uh, so I'm going to see, well, what if in addition to editing the font size of that particular element, maybe I try to deal with the space that it has on top. And that's going to be either padding or margin. The way I can figure that out is I can take a guess and write some code and see what happens. Or I can go in and see and, and look at this existent code and try to kind of reverse engineer and figure out if there are any bits of code that stand out that give me a clue reading from top to bottom. In this case, top is the specific, bottom is the general. On the bottom row, specific is on right, general is on left. On this row of code, top is specific, bottom is generic or uh, general. So I'm going to start top to bottom. I, I specialized in there. I, I control the H2. A level above that, I had set that uh, heading 1 through 4 will use that font. Uh, notice subtle things. Um, it's way too subtle, but heading 2 is bolder than heading 1, 3, and 4. It's just trying to tell me. There's a rule here, but it's only applying in our case, because I've selected heading 2, it's only applying to heading 2. You might see that in other spots as well, like down here. UI overlay A also uses this line of code, but in the moment the relevant code is UI page theme A. And I'm just looking around to see I do see something that says WebKit margin before, margin after, margin start, margin end. And honestly, for me, those are some new ones. I hadn't seen margin before, after, start, and end. I'm used to the margin top, margin bottom, margin left, margin right. So uh, either I haven't paid attention or these are brand new. But also notice they are vendor prefixed, meaning this, WebKit. That's supposed to be 
that's technically non-standard CSS. It's CSS that really only applies to WebKit rendering engines, which is Google Chrome and Apple Safari. Those two web browsers use that rendering engine. That, that's the rendering engine that translates the HTML. Other rendering engines are, are Trident for Internet Explorer. Well, the old one now that we've got Windows 10, it's a different rendering engine, I believe. Uh, and then um, Firefox, I believe theirs is called Gecko. And then Opera used to have Presto, but then they went over to WebKit. So there's different web browsers with different translators of the HTML. And then you've got the standard HTML, uh, the standard CSS and CSS3 tags. But because CSS3 was being slow to adopt, the web browser developers said, well, here's a stopgap measure. Here's a place in between until it's fully adopted. Vendor prefixes. So the web, uh, web browser developers would say, use our specific code and it'll work like it's supposed to. But then the problem is, you know, standards are great, but everyone makes a standard. And so this is sort of becoming like the bad old days. Remember back in the 90s when you would visit a website and it's, it would say, best viewed with Internet Explorer, best viewed with Netscape Navigator in 800 by 600 glorious resolution. Remember that? So this is happening again, unfortunately. Vendors of the web browsers, and the big dominant ones are Chrome and, and Safari, are putting their non-standard tags and people are adopting them just because they're the big... 800-pound um, gorilla in the room, like Internet Explorer used to be. So I personally avoid vendor prefixes. Uh, sometimes it doesn't look exactly like it's supposed to, but I would rather look forward to the standards than be held back than by specific browsers. After all, our app is supposed to work on all devices. But I'm getting a sense that perhaps margin is what I need to edit here. There's a little too much margin at the top of my heading too. So I'm going to see what happens. Notice if you click on your CSS selector, if you click below it, it gives you a new line to add another um, property. So I'm going to try margin, it's suggesting margin top. So I'll go with margin top. Let's see what happens with. Um, just to, I usually go overboard and then fine-tune it. Let's see what happens with 100 pixels. Okay, so it really pushed it down. Okay, so probably margin top is what I'm going for. Whatever used to be there, I can override it, uh, like putting margin top zero because there's already some inherent margin up there based on the other elements. So let's try this. It seems to give good results. Um, you, if you've got this in Chrome, you can add it here. Or if you've got it over on your notepad, add also margin-top zero. And you don't need a value there, uh, a unit, that is. You don't need pixels or inches or whatever. Zero is zero. So margin-top zero cancels out the margin that is at the top that's making it too spacious. And I like that result. You, of course, can change it as you'd like, but that's how mine looks at the moment, and it looks good. I'm going to save that to my notepad file so that I don't lose it. So a notepad, I'm going to add to that line 5, margin, dash top, colon, space 0, semicolon. I would like to increase now the size well, let me pause. Any questions so far? It's so easy to get carried away because it's so much fun. Any questions?
Um, I would like to increase the size of the, of the app name a little bit and decrease the size of the copyright notice at the bottom. So it's going to be the same sort of idea. I need to identify what element am I going to edit, play with it in the sandbox here a bit, and then make it permanent. So I'm going to, I'm going to hover over with the magnifying glass. I seem to have identified Sometimes it runs it together for some reason. But it seems to be H1 UI title. I'm going to click on that. It shows me here H1 class UI title, role heading, I, Araya level 1. Down on the bottom here, it shows h1.ui-title inside of header, dot UI header, dot UI bar, dot dash, blah, blah, blah. Very specific. And I'm going to attempt to edit the h1.ui-title. So I think I've identified the element. If I didn't, no problem. I reset this and try again, or backtrack. But uh, I seem to identify the element, so at the top right corner, I can uh, click the plus to add a new style rule. The last one that I had selected should fill itself in. That's very helpful. So then I'll tab, and I want a larger text on that font. Let's see, font size. We'll try first one point, well, we'll do two M's just to see if it's on the right track. And it didn't change. Three M's. Nope, so that might not be the best. CSS code to edit actually. Well, I took a look right below it. My code that I tried here didn't seem to be quite it, but right below it I'm seeing things that maybe this is actually the right code. I'm seeing dot UI header space dot UI dash title and then I'm seeing something about font and all of that. Now that font's being cancelled because I'm trying to write this font over here, but I'll just turn that off now. I'm saying never mind about that. And then that one comes back. So I'm going to say, okay, what if I change that? Does that do anything? 1M, 2M, yep, that does something. So UI header, UI title comma, UI footer, UI title. Remember the comma in the CSS means apply the following style edits to this and this and this and this. Like we previously did h1 comma h2 comma h3 comma h4 and they all got that font. Here a built-in element to jQuery mobile is saying apply this to the title in the header and the title in the footer, comma. And that's why they both change at the top and the bottom. I want to change the size of the top and the bottom independently. So what I'm going to try instead is I'm going to change that rule to, to say what it says down there. So UI, a dot UI, because it's a class, dash header. This is something built into um, jQuery mobile space dot UI dash title tab. So here I'm saying this class that's also part of that class. So there's two classes, two separate classes in that element, uh, which, which we see right here. We never wrote this, but this comes from jQuery mobile. There's a class attached to that H1, UI title. And that's inside of the element. Somewhere out here it'll show us UI um, header. So right here. No, it's UI header. Oh, here it is. UI header. So UI title inside of UI header. They're both classes. That's why the CSS is separated. There's so many subtleties to this. When is it spaces? When is it dots? When is it etc. But based on this inspector, uh, it's helping me figure out what I need to do. Huh. 
it's so much. Right, one point two five M. Point three five. Well, at a certain point, it is making the the font larger, but then at a certain point, it cuts off. That's because there's also other parts of this jigsaw of CSS. Reading this over here, text overflow ellipses, ellipses, ellipses. It's saying if text overflows from the prescribed dimensions, replace what what overflows with just dot dot dot. Those are the ellipses. So there's actually some other kinds of margins and such that are preventing a lot of text to be visible up on top. That's what I'm seeing here. Margin. And perhaps padding. But I'm going to see margin first. This is 0 and 30. As I've said previously in the last class, we have the box model. Every element on the screen has four sides. Top, right, bottom, left. In that order clockwise. Everything, even if it looks like a nice round element like that. It still has top right, bottom left. And so we can define the top, the right, the bottom left independently, four units. We can define all four units at once. If we add one value, if we said margin 7, then all four sides would get 7. If we say instead margin 7, 2, 7, 2, then we'll have 7 on the top, 2 on the right, 7 at the bottom, and two at the left. And the shortcut that they're using here is two values. The first value applies to the top and the bottom, and the second value applies to the left and the right. So 30% left and right. Well, what happens if I change that to, I don't know, 50%? Oops, it's even more, or even less space. Okay, lower, 10%. You see that? The higher percentage here is taking away space. So the lower percentage gives me more space at the top. So actually, I want to add that over to my UI header and title. Uh, margin 0, and I think 10% is good. And now if I go from page to page, it doesn't cut off my app's title anymore. I added a 1.5, maybe it's still too large, but I've added a larger title to my app and it doesn't cut off at the top. But then we have the issue here. I went over to the basic PC classes and there it's um, not cutting off, but now it's running behind the, the icon. I'll, I'll deal with that a little later. But I want to save this code so far to Notepad so I don't lose it. The idea of where to add it in my code uh, could be informed by where does it happen visually. I put that code before article because article comes after the heading, the header, doesn't it? So we probably won't have an issue if we put it later, but just logically um, I want to put my code in the order where it would be visible in the app because it renders it top to bottom, left to right. So that's the code there to fine-tune my, my title a bit so that my font is a little larger and it doesn't cut off the edges.
I said that I also wanted to fine-tune the footer. Then I think the footer text is too, too large. So uh, I'm getting a sense that uh, this same similar code, UI footer, UI title, they can reuse that and uh, target the footer down there. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to add a new rule. And I will uh, write UI dash footer space UI dash title. And then font size. So that this time I went uh, smaller. I went 0.75m. If you think of m's as 100%, well, a normal sized text is 100%, so it's 1m. When I added a font size to the title of 1.5m's, it's one and a half times larger, or 150%. Here, then, I went smaller, smaller than the default size of 1m. I did a fraction, 0.75m's, 0.75 or 75% not 0.75%, that's really small, 75%. And then as I look at it on my device, good, it's, uh, it's smaller, it doesn't uh, overwhelm, it gives me a little bit more screen real estate. As I test the app a little bit more, I'm saying actually I don't like the 1.5 M's for uh, the title, so I can always customize it a little bit more. Maybe 1.3. That'll still be larger, but not so large. And then I'll add the footer code to the Codica file. didn't seem like I needed to do anything with margin. The whole copyright message appeared without any um, cropping. So there must be some other CSS that is first taking precedence, giving me that space, and then my code here um, just changes the font size. So that's good. So no font size, uh, no margin, but font size of 0.75 for the footer. Uh, I suppose following my own rule, like I said, I want to put it in the order that uh, it shows up in the in the visually on the app. So I'll put it after article. In the art class screen, I see something odd. It seems to cut off my button there. Also, it doesn't seem to be aligned the same. There's some sort of margin here where the left edge of that button doesn't line up there. Therefore, it's pushing that over to the side. So let's see. Maybe there's some element, some built-in CSS here uh, that is preventing these two buttons from taking up the space that I wanted. So again, I could click around or highlight sometimes the particular element won't be obvious so what I usually do is click on the element that's close enough and then start looking start backtracking either down here on the on this footer <coughs> area of code or maybe backwards through the actual HTML Let's see, this This was this grid that we set up a while ago. So if I click on that, go back one more level. So if I go back one more level, it's div of UI grid A. And we also added the grid align center class that we invented. 
and um, it seems that the reason that this is not fully lined up to the left, there might be some margin or padding there. If I deal with that, then this might not cut off on the side. Oh, I see right there, overflow hidden. This is a this is a default thing to jQuery Mobile, and I can tell this because if you haven't noticed, next to each rule that it explains to you, it tells you where it's coming from. This is coming from my style, my font file. This one's coming from jQuery Mobile file. This is coming from the Codica file, line 18. It tells you also what line to to look at in your in your CSS file. When I'm trying to figure out, when I'm trying to figure out uh, questions of alignment and such, usually I just put in a quick color to make it visible because these things are invisible, and because you can type it with one hand, I usually type pink or red. But now I kind of see what I what I'm up against here. There's this little bit of edge on the left, so. Maybe I can then experiment. Well, what if I um, let me try first um, padding. I have a feeling that maybe padding left. Well, what if I say padding everywhere zero? Didn't seem to do it. Okay, what about padding left? And there, say zero. No, okay. Well, if we increase that, if we increase it, it does push it over, but if we put zero, it doesn't seem to be canceling it out, and I wouldn't really want to deal with negative numbers. Margin left. Margin left is going to deal a bit more with the overall placement of that element, so that might not be the right direction. So I might not be editing the right thing. I might be the the UI grid container might not be what I should be targeting. It might be the actual buttons themselves. The buttons might have some built-in margin or padding. So let me try that. Hmm. UI page theme A, UI button. It's close. It still seems to be off by a pixel or two. 
but it seemed that if I edit the left margin of the button itself, which is UI page, wait, what was it? It was I guess it was UI page theme A, UI button. So in uh, Codica, I'm going to, after the article, um, dot UI dash page dash theme A. Uh, then there's a space dot UI dash button margin dash left so target only the left side colon space zero so I've zeroed out the left margin to uh, tighten up that space a little bit so there is a space between those two classes they're not attached UI page theme A and then UI button classes, they're separate. Okay, so we still have a couple of more things to edit. It's uh, happening through CSS, and we're using the Element Inspector built into Chrome. I'm able to do it live because of the confluence of, of elements that my device is compatible and all of that. What I'm doing, though, is still as if I had simply opened the HTML file itself. If you're not able to do exactly what I'm doing, you'll still be able to do an approximated version by simply opening your HTML file of your project in the web browser. I'm running the actual app on my device, but since it's HTML based, I can still right click and open with uh, Chrome or Firefox or whatever, and you'll still be able to do this to some degree. So for example, I want to right click, open with Chrome, the index file, this brings up a, a version of it here, it is not the full app, so some functionality will not work because it's not an app. But at least then I will be able to right-click, inspect element. That's also built into Firefox. And then you get that inspector that I've been looking at. Slightly different um, layout, it looks like. But um, same sort of thing, where you can then have the scratch pad where you can edit. Uh, you can sleuth finding the right piece to edit, make changes mistake okay just undo it or if you 
uh, like the mistake, then apply it permanently in the in Notepad. So let's take our first break and uh, maybe take a moment to finally, with these edits, uh, build your app, right? Run it on your emulator or your real device, then you'll have it more permanent also. When we come back, we'll see about editing a little bit more CSS and a couple of other more concepts to talk about. So it's uh, 7.10, we'll be back at 7.20.